What's going on guys, check it out. We're back at it again with another lesson. I wanted to address a bad habit that I see a lot of beginners use and I completely understand I play this way as well, but that's with the right hand plucking technique. So we're gonna talk about a few things that you can do to correct this bad habit and just to get you straight. So in the beginning of your playing, you may see a lot of players playing like this, plucking up through the string. You might want to do that, but it's not necessarily a pluck up. And I kind of hate that it's called pluck because this is what people think of coming under the string and plucking up from the string. But it's really more like a roll than a pluck. So you see the difference? So my hand rolling or my finger rolling off of the string onto the next versus plucking up into the air of nothing here. <laughs> so rolling on the string, so the tip of your finger rolling through each string. Okay, and this technique will help you so much. So I'm gonna show you a demonstration of just playing like a regular scale. I'll play the scale up here. So I'll pluck the scale in the bad way. So this is the bad habit. <laughs> the correct way. So not only did you hear a difference, but you saw a dramatic difference in both styles. One way to correct this technique or this bad habit is to just straighten your fingers out just a little bit. As you saw when I was doing the plucking motion, my fingers were really curved and plucking under the string. But if you straighten your fingers out just a little bit, it's almost like you're walking. I've talked about this before to a lot of the members or to a lot of students, just straightening your fingers out just a little bit will cause you to actually have that rolling action. So if you see in the bad way or the bad habit, that sound is actually not that pleasing and you're more apt to hit the string with your nail if your nail isn't cut to correct length. So you might get this thin, tinny sounding, you know, tone versus a more bassier, bassier tone using the tip of your fingernails rolling through the strings. So that's one way that you can fix this technique just from curving to straightening out just a little bit. You want a slight curve, let me show you. You want a slight curve on your fingers, not more, curve like that but just a slight curve as if you're walking right so with this this i don't know what this is I, that's like jumping or skipping or i don't know but yeah more so like you're walking hence walking base so when you guys try this technique just go slow you can play this with anything you can play with an open string an exercise that i like to do is just an open string exercise it's just playing through the string your e string one two three four your a string one, two, three, four. The most simplest exercise you can possibly do just utilizing your strings. The D string, D, and then the G string. Now, there's so many different variations or variables that come with your right hand plucking technique because your right hand is not just used to pluck, it's actually used to mute the strings as well. So I wanna talk a little bit about muting. So sometimes you may be wondering, why are my strings ringing when I'm plucking with my right hand, even when I'm playing something as simple as a major scale? That's not a major scale. Why are the rest of my strings ringing? But that's because of your right hand technique. So if you're plucking the wrong way or the bad habit, you have no control over where your fingers land because your fingers are up and going into space and not really landing on anything. So. Right hand, right hand technique is so, so, so important. So let me show you. So first of all, my thumb, either my thumb is resting on my pickup or just resting on the E string if I'm not using it at the time. So if you see that, just resting on the E string, not bending it down, just resting there or up top here. Either way is fine. I, I really, you know, I'm not really, uh, you know, too crazy about you know which way that you do it, whatever feel com feels comfortable for you. As long as you're not playing the E string at the same time, uh, that's a great place to rest your thumb. Also, it's a great technique to use to mute the string. So if I'm playing my C string here, if I play, so you can see, my thumb is resting on the E string. Another thing is try not to play 
into your thumb. Try not to pluck into your thumb. Try to play away from it or, or at a different angle. See what I mean? So not plucking into your, your thumb here, but just slightly to the side, okay? Uh, just so you can have some room. So it mutes the E string automatically just from putting your finger there on your thumb. Now the next string, when you play the next string, it goes through that string and it stops the A string from ringing. So that's why it's important as well because now you're using so many techniques with your right hand instead of, and all of my strings are ringing still now. So that covers two strings already. So E string, the thumb is resting on the E string. A string, once I play the D string, boom. Now my A and my D string are accounted for and they're muted just with my right hand technique. So as you see, there's so many different techniques that happen just with the right hand, not only just plucking, but muting as well. And we'll find some other advanced, I guess you can say advanced techniques as far as using your right hand or your plucking hand with muting because even your ring finger comes into play and we'll talk about a different technique, a floating type of technique with your thumb. Uh, if you're playing a five string or six string, you may wanna use this technique only because you have to shift down strings every time you move. And sometimes that can be a little bit time consuming. So sometimes what a lot of players do is they'll float, they'll float across the strings and play that way uh, just so you can get some you know, muting going on here on with your right hand instead of just following your hand that way. Take it slow, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise, and notice the same thing with the tone. Not only are you looking here to make sure your fingers are placed correctly, but listen to the difference. You know, this is how you usually sound when you're playing. You want to be able to defer that and, you know, change it or switch it just a little bit so you can change it to the right technique. So also listen at the same time that you're looking and practicing this technique. Take it slow. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.